So welcome. Uh, welcome to this going to be interview and it's going to be super special because I have here a very honored guest. Boys, I would like to welcome you in the Telka studio and of course the I could call you the host, the host and the rim basket Košice uh, trainer Norbert Kalabiška. Hello. 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 And on your invitation to the Košice came really great guy uh, in a basketball world, very well known, Jason Smethers. Hello. Hi. Hi. So the NBA skill coach, and actually that's why we are here in this studio, because we have you here. So NBA skill coach sounds very sexy to me, like in terms of, you know, to all basketball players. So what does this mean and why you are here? Yeah, so I'm here to help Coach Noro at uh, Rim Basket. Mm -hmm. But what I'm here to do is kind of teach the kids, you know, show them what is possible. So mm -hmm. what I do is I train players, I help players at all levels from the NBA down to kids. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm a personal skills coach, so I try to make the individual better, try to get them more opportunities, try to get them more playing time, just different players of all different skill sets. And I've had a nice relationship with Nora over the years. And, you know, the fact that he was starting up a new club and reached out to me, wanting me to come help with the kids. Mm -hmm. You had cannot say no. Yeah, had to, say no. had to come help him out. It's just, it's too fun not to. Working with him is just such an honor. Perfect. And guys, where you get to know each other? I um, mean, started in GBA, the organization I worked before. Uh, I had Gate, a, uh, get, get Better, better Academy. Academy. Yeah, yeah, based in the Czech Republic right now in a smaller city, but before in you know, Prague. Mm -hmm. And we met with the Jays there, uh, thankful my boss, Julian Betko. And I had an honor to meet him, and it was a fun because at the same time we have two people in the academy. One of them was uh, Jason, mm -hmm. and that's where it all started. Wow, very good. How you remember your time in uh, GBA? No, it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was they were a little bit further than where you got your guys' club is right now. So it was kind of like in the middle mm -hmm. of their growth. But I was I was there for a whole month, so I really got to kind of learn okay. how they were and develop the relationship with Coach Noro, and you know pick his brain and. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. To, it was my first experience in kind of Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. So that was a different change to like see how the game is, see how they communicate. So like from Indianapolis directly to the uh, Eastern part of uh, Europe to Czech Republic. Yeah. <laughs> shock for you or? A little bit of a culture shock, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, anytime you go somewhere where for me, English isn't the first language. Yeah. You just kind of sit there. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have all known that we are not that much speaking English in, in general, yeah. especially the older generation. But yeah, you're working with the kids or with your uh, with your colleagues in uh, basketball. And I believe there's also like cultural differences in basketball terms, like the style of play. And you could also say it from your coach perspective. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely different from like the American style where it's very free flowing, very mm -hmm. fast, like the game's very athletically dominated, mm. where over here in Europe, it's more skill. It's more kind of below the rim execution, X's and O's, a lot more of the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And the fundamentals kind of get lost in the States because we have such big jumpers and fast athletes that you kind of sacrifice a little bit of the skill set mm -hmm. for the athleticism, where over here you maximize the skill set and the athleticism is just kind of a bonus. Mm -hmm. So from a skills training perspective, it's kind of, it's, it's fun to work with the athletes because they have so much room to grow. Exactly. But over here, the skill sets are built with such a good foundation because mm -hmm. it's so important mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a completely different way to kind of approach the game. Mm -hmm. so, so also the culture shock in a game terms. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and, and the rules are different too. So like adjusting to how they okay. play here versus mm -hmm. how they play in the States, like we can travel a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, you can't drag your pivot, you have to have different dribbles. So there's a whole different skill set that's needed for the, rule, the rules here versus the rules in the States, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which are, it's a fun challenge to can try to learn something new mm -hmm. and then have him tell me every once in a while, yeah, I mean, we uh, can't do that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, yeah, it's true. You're asking about 24 and all this, but I think so the game getting global, like let's say mm -hmm. like the European guys in the NBA right oh, yeah. now, Jokic, Doncic, Nurkic right now, Wagner after this championship, it's getting really global. Mm -hmm. But still, as Jay say, you can st still see these differences between like how athletic guys are and mm -hmm. the, if European kids match that. 
they don't get it like it's just like it's, it's different and Nora uh, you as a trainer of the kids mostly of the rim basket you are here just uh, three months now that's my fourth yeah this is your fourth month yeah. so you came here with a new energy is your purpose really to bring up the international coaches international style and global style of the play or what's your goal with the rim basket yeah, I still think so. The Slovakian basketball needs to change a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we're doing everything. What, what, what specifically? Specifically. Are we going there? I mean, yeah, I can, I can say like my opinion, yeah. you know, this is my opinion. Uh, first of all, mentality, you know, how we think about the game, mm -hmm. how we think about the life and everything. That's mm -hmm. the first thing what I try to bring here as, as, as I was learning and uh, I'm doing a little bit different than people here right now, mm -hmm. but before I was same and, um, Yes, I said that we, we can't stay just into the country because unfortunately Slovakia is not really ranking high. Mm -hmm. So if we want to really get, produce some players or get something better, we have to go away from the country. You know, we have to compete with the better teams, with the better countries. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like internationally, which is, is too much here right now because people doesn't used to. Mm -hmm. But you know, like it's the same thing like I'm saying always like that, like when the, the live ball was uh, invited, it was like Edison need to work for it. So mm -hmm. somehow it needs to come. And I think so. If you don't start the steps and you're afraid, you will never accomplish. Ooh, That's what I think. That's what I think. <laughs> was, yeah, I would love to be in your team with yeah. these nice <laughs> ideas. <laughs> good, good job, coach. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I saw that you already met the um, uh, the Nor uh, Noros um, small kids on mm -hmm. a training, uh, and I saw that some of them really was looking at you because I was browsing the Instagram, of course. And there are some videos, so also you could check on it. Um, is it is it a little bit different? Uh, this, there is a language barrier, or it's fine. There's a little bit of one, but mm -hmm. the you can kind of conquer that with a lot of different ways in training. Like yeah. whether it's me doing demonstrations, whether slow. I, my thing is I have to slow down mm -hmm. how I talk because I can get going. I get excited, just like any coach would. Mm -hmm. Just and I get rolling and just slowing down a little bit to help with that mm -hmm. barrier. But the language of basketball once you're on the court, is mm -hmm. all very similar. So it's I more, might, more body language than really explaining something. Yes. Mm -hmm. So being able to demonstrate and show and kind of do a show and tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then every kid learns different too. So that's one of the things in being a trainer is knowing that some kids learn by video, some kids learn by demonstration, some kids you can tell, some you have to draw it out for. So okay. you learn a lot of different communication techniques. So that has helped that helps the gap okay and i see that you are really uh, talking from the perspective of the in individual development because the skill coach means that's the difference between you two maybe we could like um describe it uh, better because the trainer and the skill coach what's the difference between of you i'm invested in the individual player being able to have more opportunity so mm -hmm. I would say the handoff between the two of us is my job is to get the kid or the player as ready as possible to do as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that way when they get to coach, he can use them any way he needs. Because the more I can let a kid have skill, the more he can do, the more positions he can play, the better he can shoot, the better he can dribble. He doesn't need to do all of it, mm -hmm. but the more opportunity that that will get him, then when I hand him off to coach, and I mean, in the ideal world, like I get a team mm -hmm. and I can like structure it the way it is, you know, mm -hmm. if the people can do some, I don't want to go to the terminology, but off screens and pick and rolls, it depends what the kid knows. I can like make a place, you know, yeah. offense, defense, whatever I can just structure it. So basically I think so this is not a really the big thing in Europe, but I think so the skill coach is very important. And mm -hmm. also like it's a friend, you know. And mm -hmm. each of a player needs a friend and coach cannot be with everybody every time. So if the skill coach coach them, he can be also a normal person, normal friend, dad, whatever. As I'm trying this to be sounds too. me. This sounds me like a little bit uh, uh, higher standard. Is it normal in Slovakia that the uh, players has their own coaches? No, no, it's not, not really, happening. right? Mm -hmm. Basically, what That's what, 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 what is this like? I'm not I'm not considering myself as a skill coach, but I was forced first of all from Julian in GBA to learn how to be a skill coach mm -hmm. because GBA is about the development. So I know about the skill a lot but it's not my department. So if we talk with Jay's, at least I can understand him. We understand each other. He knows about the game because he played, mm -hmm. right? He coached those. So we both know from each other, like I know what Jay's talk about. He knows what I talk about and we mm -hmm. can put together. So 
this thing it would be very nice if started here because it's very important also as a physio massage it's part of it you know like it's a like the whole package whole package mm -hmm. yeah it would be very nice but it's not normal here in the states is it standard in the states it's very normal mm -hmm. it's it's grown a lot over the last i'd say 10 years mm -hmm. as the game has changed because the game used to be very team oriented and yeah. the way defenses are nowadays it's all about can you create for yourself mm -hmm. and it's become very competitive More individual mm -hmm. and and now in the states like with college basketball and college sports being able to pay athletes and high school it's so there's a little bit more money driven behind mm -hmm. it too which causes people to invest more early mm -hmm. so it, like since since when the kid could start what basketball the, the youngest that i've started with was fourth grade fourth grade fourth grade so, so that would be 10 years old 10 years old not year, not earlier uh, i would believe that here there are kids who will start uh, playing like at five well no? they'll start playing but they uh, okay. won't train like, like the normal the young, play. yeah and then there's <laughs> a, they'll go to camps and things like that but to have somebody like me mm -hmm. that's like an end of like working with you mm -hmm. individually that'd be a i wouldn't enjoy it as much mm -hmm. either so it's it's kind of there's like a threshold that you have to reach kind of before i make sense yeah i see I see, I see. Yeah, it is like so I can just add is like calls LTD model. You have to have a fundamental to start something, you know, like mm -hmm. moving, start moving normally so he can do something with you because if you don't move, it's very hard to accomplish something. But this is a cool point. So first, if you have the kid who loves movement whatsoever it is, but you are the you are the dad who loves to play hockey or basketball or whatsoever, you should first make this um this like a uh, sport base and then a little bit go f to the specific sport or what do you prefer i mean there's a whole of a bunch of talks and books about this like specialization that's what i'm asking mm -hmm. because yeah. there's so many approaches i mean my opinion in the, is proven by a lot of let's say belgian football started in two, 2014 the ltd model worked right they won the championship like there's many proofs it works mm -hmm. it's a just hard process because like you don't want to lose a kid because he pays you in 12 but at the same time in 12 he's supposed to do three sports Exactly. And in 15, he's supposed to choose one. So, but until 15, it's a lot of money from the one person, especially in Slovakia. Mm. So they want to lose the kid. If you suggest the kid to go into the tennis, means like a Tuesday he has a tennis, Wednesday he has a basketball, but you want to win the game Saturday. So you need him Tuesday in practice. Mm -hmm. And that's what is like, there was talk about mentality. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to change here because it's not the way how to produce the players. It's the way how to just sometimes maybe make some results, but the results doesn't lead you to be great. You know, it just doesn't mean you win the game, you are great. But this leads me to the idea, like, uh, what do you want to rim basket would be in five years? Good, good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I came here with the three things. I'm going to repeat them. I said them last time. Being professional club, mm -hmm. right, that we can talk about these hours, you know, what it means professional. Uh, uh, like uh, having the competitive uh, environment, they have to compete. Mm -hmm. So bring maybe the people like the the kids needs to really compete and they have to have somebody next to each other when they give like really block each other you know mm -hmm. like defend each other like not to like a 150 and two meter that doesn't match at mm -hmm. the point you know and the third thing is like to really create a successful not only players but the people like the people if they because how many people how many players will really play basketball you know like 10 percent of them five percent of them 15 we don't know mm -hmm. but if they exactly. leave the place i want to leave them with some values so if they're going to be doctors because the same is needs quality doctor needs to be a quality player. So if they leave the place, they live with something. They can go to London, Germany, States, and they can like, they can be basically care about themselves without True. learning. Or stay in Slovakia, for instance. Yeah, it's also <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying that's the that's the three points I have in five years. Also, there is more stuff to talk about. That's that's, that's the main points. Okay, and okay, so I believe because we are. A little bit coming to the end of our uh, our interview, but I believe that because of uh, you are here, Jason, I believe that you have the really full schedule. Is it correct? It's yeah, but yeah. it's fun. I mean, the full schedule is spent ninety five percent of the time on the court, mm -hmm. which is what I'd be doing if I was back home in the states. Mm -hmm. It's like on a basketball court. I mean, I was joking with him earlier. It's like I traveled 16 hours yeah. to just go to another basketball court. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it's, so for me, it's that's the fun is it's just it's no, a busy please schedule please of work. take him also to right. some nice <laughs> restaurant or to some... <laughs> you know, we go on Friday. We have a, like a dinner. So. 
Yeah, that sounds good. great. That sounds great. Yeah. Have you heard that in Slovakia, and especially Košice, we have the most beautiful girls, for instance. So take your inspiration. <laughs> you heard that. Friday, <laughs> Friday evening. Yeah, it's your evening. <laughs> I've only seen kids at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have uh, our uh, our stuff, so we can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. yeah, we, but we have a beautiful woman. That's true. Like, it's nothing nothing wrong to say. It's true. Perfect. Thanks, guys. It was really fun to have you in uh, in the studio. Thanks that you uh, accept invitation and we had a nice talk. Thanks for Thank you so much. Thanks.